All right. Well, I've turned on the recorder, which means we're five minutes late. All right. So, <laughs> okay. Welcome, everybody. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for today and for what you're doing. And Lord, I'm really excited about this. And we thank you that there are a bunch of people here and people ready. And Lord, this is m more about your word than anything we else we have to do today. Lord, we want to know that you are, are blessed. We want to know that you are thanked. We want, to want you to know that we praise you and we receive from you the word of God. And that, Lord, this is amazing what you are showing. And I just give you all the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's like I'm trying to get the mouse over there. <laughs> all right. So, all right, everybody, how's it going? Great. Jenny, you can sit right here. Um, so you can write, hon. So you can write. You want to sit right here at the table? Because I keep going back. Absolutely. No, no, no. <laughs> when you guys get your little self together here? Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I put a leaf in the table. You'd think that would help everybody, but it looks okay. You know, just very accommodating. Well, just to write, so that's I know. I, I get you. She brought marshmallows to throw at me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she was thinking with mercy. <laughs> it's better than bricks. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, we have prayed. Let's go on. <sighs> I almost feel like I want to pray again. Oh Lord, thank you for talking. Okay. Here we go. Okay, we have been. We are started a series last week on. Um, the energy force, the surrounding force, the things that we are going and um, this has been really, really interesting. So what I'm going to be doing now is the review of what we did last week and I'll be going through it a little bit quicker than I did last week. So just remember this is review as, as if it matters to anybody or even me. Okay, <laughs> we're going to be talking about the source today which is going to be kind of fun. But what we've been learning is the idea of where whatever you go into comes out of you. Um, this is a actually a, an extension of the into series because as we learned about going into things and doing the intos, what you go into is now we're trying to stress that that is something that comes out of you. The into and the out of. Um, everything is in motion in the spirit realm. And the more we get the idea that everything is in motion, the better we'll be. The more we understand that there are things out there that are affecting us and that we are affecting, and etc., is really, really important. So um, you cannot stop the effect. Okay, now you can slow it down some. Okay, this is what is kind of one of our, our big deals is uh, we can increase the effectiveness. Okay, it's continual. There's stuff that is happening around us. Uh, just ignoring that those are around us doesn't change the fact that it's affecting us and causing things. Mm -hmm. Okay? In fact, I got, a, I got a word coming up here that is one of my favorite statements now, and uh, it's coming up pretty soon, but I'll, I'll get to it. But uh, this is fascinating. The increase of what we're doing is continual, and it's observable. It doesn't take long to really watch somebody to find out what things they're into. Okay, really? It doesn't take that much. His, dis his discernment is right there, okay? We diminish the effect by what else we go into. Now, that goes both positive and negative. Mm -hmm. If we're into something negative, when we start doing the things of the Lord, we can diminish the effect of the negative thing. Mm -hmm. But if we're getting the things of God, then you start getting to something stupid. You can affect, effectively diminish the effect of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is any direction. Okay, back and forth and back and forth. Okay, we can diminish or we can augment or enhance it. Okay, uh, really. You can, you can get into the things of the Spirit. You can get more into the things. If you want to walk into, and I'll, I'll just use this illustration because we we'll use this a lot. If you can get into peace. Yeah? Isn't that begin mm -hmm. to walk into the energy field of peace for you to get into joy enhances the peace for you to get into love 
enhances the peace. When you get into these things, it enhances the peace, the joy, and the love. Okay, you can enhance them. Hmm. You can also be really stupid. Hmm. Okay, you can get into something dumb, and then you get into something else dumb, and it makes the first dumb worse. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody just want to fight me on this one? <laughs> I, I think. You do dumb dumb? You go dumb dumb. Dumb. <laughs> dumb is as dumb does. I don't know. It's just like, you know, and so, anyway. We continually transmit what we've gotten into. Okay? It's just, it just is going to happen. And the more it gets more complex with each step. And guys, trying to explain this, simplified down to where we understand it, is so simplified, it's almost ridiculous. Okay? Because the complexities of what we are walking into is astronomical. And so seeing them it has been really interesting for me, but knowing all the different things that we can be into has been the more I get to thinking about it, the more it blows my little head. Okay, you got that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Last week, we, st we started talking about body has five senses. Okay, seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. Okay, we have the five senses. We also know that the five senses is how we discern things and we go into. But we got to understand that going into also brings the out of. Okay, so when we get into the physical things, you can tell how this is going to come out. Now, I'm going to be, this is going to be really stupid, and you're going to love this. I don't know if you're going to love it or not, but it's just like if you get into COVID, it will come out of you. Yes. Okay? <laughs> Amen, huh? <laughs> Okay, you get into something and it starts exuding from you. It's the same thing, folks, when you ever get into, uh, you know, anything. It just doesn't matter. I, I get caught up because I, I think of all these il illustrations of it. But you know what it's like to be walking along and all of a sudden you smell something. What have you done? You've come into the range of something that stinks. You are now in its territory. If you stay in that and walk away. Others can go, where have you been? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is true. You okay. tell by some of the looks on the faces, some we, people have never we, experienced a skunk. Oh boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And uh, yeah, it'll do it. Now, but we also know that in the soul, we also have um, seeing. We see things in the spirit. We are in the soul realm. We hear people different than what just the words they say. We hear what goes behind that. We taste people when we first meet them to see if this is somebody we want to be around. We smell things when we're around people and understand. Boy, you, if you've never smelled somebody soulishly, you're in for a good ride. I want you to learn how to do that. Because it is really amazing how you can get around some people and it's part of the discernment that the Lord is using to help you know what they're into and how to minister to them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Most people stink. So, yeah. And, and, and a social commentary right there from the peanut gallery. Okay. <laughs> and and I, I'm not, I'm not die, denying it. The issue comes also that we do feel them. Okay? We do feel people around us soulishly. And, of course, what you go into comes out of. Okay, so it is kind of amazing to me when you can sit around. If you've been around um, alcoholics for any length of time, if you've been around them, they, they try to hide, but they walk in the room and you got them. I don't even need a breathalyzer at work. No, you just, you just kind of know, you know. And it's just one of those things, you soulishly, it's not even just physical. Right. It's soulishly, you can see it in their eyes, you can see things happen, you can feel it. Well, then let's get into the things of the Spirit. Well, we know that we see in the Spirit, we hear in the Spirit. Um, our prayers are a sweet-smelling savor, taste and see that the Lord is good. We know that these things are given to us. We have never explored all the ramifications mm -hmm. of the senses of the Spirit realm and to know that we can have feeling. Okay? Um, Rock and I were kind of... I don't know if that was a discussion or just a, mm -hmm. a label of comments this morning, but um, they had a really 
excellent worship time in the church we were watching this morning. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they just kept running it. They just kept going. Okay? What were they feeling? See, and the songs they were talking about were talking in just, and it wasn't necessarily good theology on the songs, but they were, it doesn't matter, their attitude of worship and what they were doing, they could feel. I mean, the lady got up to do the transition from worship into the message, right, and didn't want to. And she said, no, nope, we're going to do, do this some more. And so she just, she was, finally she's on her knees on the stage. Just, I mean, it was excellent. What was she feeling? See, there was nothing physical about it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even soulish. What was she feeling? It was a spiritual atmosphere that she was into. Okay? And what goes into comes out of. we got to know these things. Okay? Got to know that that's true. So, what we were talking about, here's, here's old Joe Blow minding his own business, walking around in life. And what does he do? He finds and runs into an energy field an energy source, a field of influence, a, and I'm just always, I'm trying to really wrap around all the different words that I've been getting. An atmosphere, a cloud, a, an area, a, a range of power. It's just all sorts of stuff. Anyway, so what happens when he goes into it? Okay, well, he's in it. What is it? It's a field of energy. It's an influence. It's a dominion. Okay, but once he's in there, he submits to its authority and it's, that's it. Okay. Once you submit to its authority. Now, I've walked through stuff that I didn't submit to. Walked through it and just, you just feel everything just go, you know, and you just get out of the end and go, ah, okay. I didn't submit to it. Did it affect me? Yeah, you always get affected by these certain things, but man, I can wash off from that. Um, all the horrible things that I hear in my office at times, does it affect me? Well, yeah. Okay. What do you have to do? You have to wash it off. You have to, you have to get free from it. Okay. But if you don't, here's the problem. The others might not see the energy field you were in. They'll not see the whole cloud of stuff, but they will see that it has affected you. And that's how I, that's the only way I can draw that little guy, okay, is to change his color to match what he had gone into. Okay, now he is transmitting that. What goes in comes out of, okay, uh, very simple. It may be hidden to sight. Others might not be able to see it in the natural. However, it still has energy. It still has power. And it can be a positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So this whole realm here is positive or negative. I'm hoping I'm making sense on this because yeah, I'm, totally. I'm trying to I'm really and just sitting right there today listening to this. So I turned around and looked at Roxy because she's been moaning and groaning about her hip thing and and I, was, and I turned around and I was looking at her and I looked over her shoulder to over in my my work area and it just like that. Boom. I was thought off into a whole realm of thinking that will have, be a whole message. It'll be a whole part of this. And I just went, oh, look, oh, look, because if you, and, and I, just, I just started tripping out. She goes, yeah, you don't make any sense. You're good. Okay. So what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> poor Roxanne. Yeah, she is poor Roxanne. Okay. Greek word energes. Energeia, energeio, energama, energes. Okay, these are the different Greek words that are all out of this one root word, energes. And it's from en, in, and ergon, which means to toil or to work. So it's the inner working, literally what works inside you. It's the energy, it's the in working. Now, I've, maybe we should just talk about this one of these days, just for the grins, but to understand how energy works, because in a jar of gasoline, there's energy, mm -hmm. but it's not being utilized. Potential energy. It is potential energy. Mm -hmm. That was the word I was going to say, but yeah. it's all good. It has potential energy. What happens if you ignite it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's real energy. A a active energy. <laughs> it's active energy. Okay. But that's the problem is that we have all this potential energy in us. And that's the idea. Okay. The energy force that is functioning around. What influences you and what do you let work? 
Now, this is the part that, uh, and I, I keep saying you, because this is something that I'm trying to develop for use in my office, because I'm working on stuff, but to know that when somebody is doing something, so what, are, what energy source are they allowing to work within them? Mm -hmm. What influences them? What's going on? Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to let you a little idea of this, any identity that you have, any identity that you have is what influences you and that's what you've let work in you. Mm -hmm. And if you bought the lie that you were unworthy and that's your identity, what happened? Boom, that's your influence and that's what you let work. Bless you. Okay, mm -hmm. blessings on you, sir. Thank you. Okay. And therefore, it determines what dominion you've submitted to. I gotta quit laughing when I say that because it tickles me. I see all this stuff happen. It's a down boy. Sit, stay. Okay. <laughs> the field of energy you allowed to be in you, it radiates and transmits its own sets of frequencies. Okay, it radiates and transmits. This is why a person who has been a victim will continue to be a victim mm -hmm. because the abusers feel that energy, they feel that transmissions, they feel those vibrations and they don't even have to discern much, it's just drawn to it because they are synchronized frequencies. Okay, This is why as a porn user I could find it anywhere. People have asked can demons read your thoughts? They don't need to. You are telegraphing everything, beaming out of you in every way. Why should they have to even read those things you call thoughts? They can taste you a mile away. They can taste you a mile away is a very good way of putting it, but they can they can sense you. Okay? You are beaming it. If if only we had understood this a while back. Yeah. This is this is really, really important, okay? But the scripture about all this is getting kind of exciting. Getting kind of exciting. That was probably the dumbest thing I've ever said. I'm Very, saying, I'm just, I'm dumb. You should have. Okay. Probably not, huh? Wow. Ooh. Happy birthday, Lee. All right. Now. And on that note. <laughs> and she's she's probably right. I can't believe you said that. that oh, those are them. Yeah. I, I can't. And what's really sad is I say that from the pulpit, you know. And then she she was counting I, how many. I can't believe you said it. She I said one day it was pretty bad. Okay. Then she told the guys that I, I went to the Pure Man conference with. She says, "Tell me how many. I can't believe you said it." They, he says, "Keep a count for me." And they uh, I ran out. I couldn't I couldn't count. Okay. Lee has had this issue. Okay. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1. Now, this is what we covered last week. Ephesians chapter 1. This is the prayer that Paul prays at the beginning of Ephesians for people. Okay, this is one of the, the Pauline prayers. Ephesians 1, Colossians 1, Philippians 1 that we've used so many times. It says, and, may, and that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, he's praying this, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the full revelation knowledge, the epigenosis of him. The eyes of your mind having been enlightened for you to know. The eyes of your mind. That's that discernment we're seeing. For you to know. What is the hope of His calling? What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? This is inner man, new man maturity. This is what He's praying for. I want you to grow up. Because you have in you more than you know. I want you to, they may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may understand what's going on. The eyes of your mind being enlightened. Okay, He's praying for perception and understanding of the function. Okay. He's praying, this is what I'm praying for you, that you get it. Now, he's not praying that you being powerless are given power. He's not praying that. Understanding. He's praying for the understanding of what you already have. Then it goes into verse 19. Verse 19 says, And what is the surpassing greatness of his power into us? What is the surpassing greatness of his dunamis into us, the ones believing according to the, and here's our word, the energy of his dominating life force? Mm -hmm. Okay. That, is this help understanding? Okay. This is the third thing he prays. I pray that you have the understanding and they have all this power and everything. And, and one thing you need to understand is what is the surpassing greatness of his power into you? 
How are you going to get it? By believing according to the, the energy of His dominating life force. Bam, wow. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Here's my sentence that I'm going to continue on all over the place. Faith is the spiritual force of causation. Faith is the spiritual force of causation. Faith makes things happen. It causes things to happen. It is the spiritual force of causation. It causes things to happen. Now that's, I like that. Isn't that good? See, that's you, you like it? Yeah. See, I, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's yeah. an old guy. Yeah, it's just like that. Okay. It's the energy doing the work, which is pretty impressive. It's working the dominion of the vitality of life, the dominating the dominion of vitality. It's the dominion of life force. <laughs> just, that's a whole other thing that we walk into. That is a force that works through us, in us, out. He's praying you go into that, so that's the thing that's coming out of you. Okay? Paul is praying for this to be true. Why? Because it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. Had a very intense conversation with a gentleman on the phone yesterday. Um, because the pastor of the church that he's been hanging around um, is kind of mad at uh, Andrew Womack. And the reason is because people have come out of Andrew Womack's school and came to his church, and there's a bunch of people up where he guys lives, that he, Andrew Womack people, and they keep praying for people, for healing. But it doesn't always happen. So therefore, it's all wrong. No. He says, well, why not? So well, you're missing so many different aspects of this. That, okay, what's the maturity level of the person doing the praying? Mm. Are they listening to what God is saying or not? Are they doing what they well, just you know? Come on, let's let's think about all these other ramifications of all this stuff. Instead, we say, well, we laid hands on them when we prayed, and they didn't get healed. So, well, that was the whole thing that when I was growing up as a Baptist, that we said that healing was not for today, because if God was going to do healing, He was going to do it through us, because we had the revelation. We were the whole, the harbingers of truth. We were the ones that held it all out. We had the Bible. And if God was going to heal anybody, it was going to be through us because we were the solid ones. Therefore, God doesn't heal today because He's not doing it through us. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. And when I finally learned that all that was, oh, that was pretty bogus. That was pretty, that was lame. That was really lame. And I, yeah, praise God, I got away from that. The left foot of fellowship helped me out the door of that. Okay. <laughs> so the inner gaze is the inner working of force. It's the inner working. It's, we'll see how this is working. Work, working and using the energy of the spirit realm. Now that force field is functional continually. It is something that is always happening. Both life and death, or good and evil, are working. It's always working. There's always something happening. You know, when, when you're not doing anything and you're just lazing around and just being a lump, you know, just not, you know, just, you think that nothing is happening. Sorry. Something is happening. It's always happening. What's happening is that life, maybe, What's your attitude? What's going on in the inside of you? What's, what are you thinking? What are you blaming? What are you judging? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Is it death? Could be. Okay, especially if God told you to go do something, you're not doing it. <laughs> just lazing around is doing what? It's just submitting you to the wrong frequencies. But the problem is we just haven't been seeing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and not just, you know, all three realms. We need to be seeing what's happening around us. We're not seeing it. Remember this statement? Ignorance is bliss. Wrong. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is ignorance. Ignorance is death. Okay? Not seeing it is killing us. Mm -hmm. So ignorance isn't going to help you. So we have to learn to grow into the, our discernment and get more and more with it. It requires looking for it on purpose. And I mean on purpose. We have to look for things. That's the idea. We are extremely complex beings. We need to know that. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. And again, we don't get this. This is so far beyond our ability to understand. The Holy Spirit living within us. How much of the Holy Spirit do you have? All. Mm -hmm. Then why are we ineffective? Okay, so this thing is still mind-blowing. Every time I do the spirit, soul, and body chart, and I say, the first thing that happens when you get born again is the Holy Spirit moves in. And I know that I'm saying the right words. It's in English. I understand what I just said. Holy Spirit moves into our spirit. 
and I am so far beyond explaining that to people. And they go, uh huh, okay. May I make a short analogical statement? Okay. You know how you always say, when it comes to skydiving, why would I jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Yeah. And you just said that it's a force field that is continually operational no matter what. Why would you step outside of a perfectly operational force field? Brain damage comes to mind. <laughs> okay, yes, that's, that's exactly right. Okay. But we also have other influences in us. Uh, uh, for one, our flesh mm -hmm. to deal with continually. Okay, uh, anybody here not have flesh anymore? You've, you've decided that you've now obtained Christ likeness? Well, I've had quite a bit. <laughs> That's, we were all going to agree with you. It's all good. No, it's okay. We all have the same problem. Okay. Maturity is getting rid of our bad energy fields. Yeah. Now, you're no, when you were a young Christian, you were praying for everybody all the time? Mm hmm. Why'd you quit? Mm -hmm. hmm. Laziness. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we yeah. it's not working. Now, wait a minute. What's not working? Why are we not working mm -hmm. on us to make it working? Okay, what is going on? Mm -hmm. That's our maturity level. Okay. It's because literally nobody ever asked that question. Oh. <laughs> what am I doing wrong that it's not working? <laughs> Well, that's one thing I tell this guy about healing. I says, the first thing that happens when somebody doesn't get healed is they either blame the person that's sick because they don't have enough faith, that's which is ridiculous because when you're sick, you don't have any faith. Okay? And that's not what it says in Scripture anyway. Right, or we blame the minister that you didn't do it right mm -hmm. and everybody gets... They don't have the faith. Oh, wait a minute. Why are we blaming anybody? Let's find out what goes wrong and get it fixed. Simple. It may be better to think in terms of life and death than good and evil. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I've, I have found this so far to be true. If I'm sitting here with somebody and I'm telling them about something they're doing, and I say it's evil, it's bad, they throw up walls, and they the ministry is just shot, uh, just stopped right there. But if I say that's death, you go, oh, it's a whole different thing. So maybe better to think in terms of life and death, not good and evil. But whatever makes sense to you and gets you free, that's that's cool. Okay. So we need to use all of our senses, and we need to beware of the forces around us, okay, completely. We need to put power in its place to where it is functional, something we can use if it's the right, right power. Becoming effective in all of our areas, and that's the end of review. Quick enough? No. You want me to go faster? Then, then Chuck will throw something at me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Somebody else wants to come in. Oh. Okay. Okay, so here we go. That was the end of review. Now we're heading... Well, Luca just hit it just in the nick of time. She came in just at the beginning of the, the new stuff. She was having a hard time getting in for some reason. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Energase. Or energy. From the Greek to the English. Makes that easy, doesn't it? Okay. There are three areas of study, and here's where we're going to be starting. And we're starting this today. Is The first one is God's energy force. Okay. Who He is and what He does. The second thing we're going to be studying as we get along with this is our energy force. How can we use this? Mm -hmm. What's going on? With it? What is He doing in us? And what is the effect of it, and how is it used? Okay. This is what I'm pursuing. It's been working real well. And then uh, negative energy. Is there such a thing? Oh, yes, there is. Okay, and we're going to be discussing the problem and the solution on negative energy areas. Okay, that label it out okay? Here we go. These energy fields already exist. They are already around. Um, we aren't creating them by discussing it. We aren't making this happen. They've already been around for a long time. Okay, but we have to be able to deal with them. We have to be able to deal with them. Just all there is to it. But once we get it, then we can do something about them. Okay, and this is my. This is where it's fun. Is that once we get this, you say, "Oh, I see what's happening." There's an energy field. I understand what's happening. This is an influence that's messing with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Okay, so just as a case in point, did you ever have a discussion with somebody and they said something and you dropped into anger? 
-hmm. I know it's not true with anybody else in this room except An Annette. Okay, so, but <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, okay, well, what did you do? As soon as you were talking to them, you let their words influence you. You actually let them interpret what's going on, and they determine the future. So you are... Hello? Hello? Who's out there doing whatever? Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh. As long as we know it's your fault, we can all just bless Dennis. Good boy, Dennis. We love you. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. If we're talking to somebody and they influence us and we receive their interpretation, what do we do? We allow their energy, negative energy, to affect us. Our flesh is affected and we exude the same in kind. And so flesh, and we respond in flesh, we can actually exponentially increase this thing into a, a blow up. Mm -hmm. You've seen this, mm -hmm. you've, you've seen it operate, you just didn't see what was happening in the soul realm. You didn't see the influences coming off of somebody, you didn't see how you stepped into it, you didn't see how you submitted to it, and you didn't see how it came out of you in a force of energy that affected them. So true. Mm -hmm. So what's our problem? Our problem is lack of discernment. We didn't see or didn't think about looking for these things. Okay. Did, did you find your keys? Uh, I didn't know I was looking for my keys. Okay. Well, if you didn't know you were looking for them, you're not going to be looking for them. You're not going to find them. Okay. It's one of those things. Unless we're looking for these things, we're not going to be looking to see what it is. We're not going to be looking for them. So once we get it, then we can do something about it. Okay? They are, all these energy fields are from God originally and then mutated into damage. Okay? All of them are good things that have been twisted and defiled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Okay. <laughs> Stop it, Lee. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Power comes from Him and then it is energized. It's the gasoline in the jar. We have the power. Then it has to be energized. Through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, it, not necessarily. Okay. Seeing that in Scripture has been really exciting. God's energy. How fun. How fun. Okay, so let's look at some of these Scriptures. These are, these are too cool. Philippians chapter 2, 12 through 13. Okay. So then, my beloved, even as you always obeyed, not as in my, ab my presence only, but how much rather in my absence, cultivate your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is energizing in you both to will and to work for the sake of His good pleasure. There's the word energase. That's where it is. For it's God who is working in you. Working? How is He working? He's energizing it in you. He's causing it to be effective. Okay? He's working in you. Okay? The word cultivate means to work it down to a fine function. You've got to take your salvation and work it. Work it. Work it. Work it. What are you doing? You're cultivating your salvation with fear and trembling. How come? Because you're in agreement with what God is doing because He's energizing it in you. If he's, if you're not going to cultivate your salvation, why would he energize it? One more time. If you're not going to cultivate your own salvation, why would God energize it? If you aren't concerned about how to make it better, why should he? Yeah, that's, that's a, we could have the, have the altar call right well, there. Yeah. More okay. importantly, you wouldn't be able to handle it and wouldn't treat it properly even if he did. Even if he did. I think it's absolutely wisdom of God that he didn't give us indiscriminate use of the Spirit of God. Indiscriminate mm -hmm. use of power. Mm -hmm. No, it has to be done according to his will. Okay, we have to do it with him. For it is God who is energizing in you both to will and to work for his sake of his good pleasure. Okay? God is energizing the power you already have, because you have it all. Him working, 
you are cooperating and applying. Mm. It's in you both to will and to work for His sake of His good pleasure. It's Him doing, energizing in us. Okay. Now this is what's, what's cool, is that you, if you understood how much power you have available and all you have to do is energize it by getting yourself lined up with what God is doing, mm -hmm. the sky's the limit. You would not be stopped in anything if you just stopped long enough to line up with His. What are you doing? You're lining up with His frequencies. Okay? Well, since that was light and fluffy, let's go to Ephesians <laughs> chapter 1. Let's go into something a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 1, starting in verse 11 and 12, and it says, In whom we also have been chosen to an inheritance. Ooh, somebody should talk on inheritance. Very good. Uh, uh, uh. Being predestined according to the purpose of the one energizing all things according to the counsel of His own will. And what's the purpose? For us to be to the praise of His glory, the ones who had previously trusted in Christ. What's the goal here? He has made Christians, He has predetermined in advance that a Christian has the Holy Spirit within them and that they can work. We've been chosen to an inheritance to inherit all that God has being predestined according to the plan, the purpose of the one energizing all things according to the counsel of His own will. We've got to do this as God is energizing it, as God is causing it to be functional. He's igniting our gasoline, okay? He's helping see how these things work, okay? God has a plan to show us off, okay? God has a plan. He wants to show what He's doing through us. His energy must be used in compliance with His will. Therein is the catch. Because you're not a superhero. It's not being able to use the power however you darn well want to. It's not indiscriminate. It's you got to do it according to what, that's what Jesus said. Being a, a man, uh, while He was here, He was operating as a Spirit-filled man. He said, I don't do anything but what I see the Father doing. I don't say anything but what I hear the Father saying it. Mm -hmm. What was He doing? He was waiting for the Father to energize it through Him before it worked. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. you, you flowing? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pausing for effect. That's a Selah moment. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> In sync with Him and His purposes. Okay? Now, now this is going to be fun. You're going to, I'm going to enjoy this. Come on along with me. Because <laughs> we're going to go down in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 again. We just covered that last week. We just reviewed it just now. Okay? Then we're going to go one more verse. Watch. Here's a go. And what is the surpassing greatness of His power? This is what he's, Paul's praying that we get. Into us, the ones believing, according to the working of His dominating life force, which He energized in Christ in raising Him from the dead. Hmm. Now, <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> Somebody gets it with me. Okay, What kind of power is God energizing in us? The same stuff He used when He energized and raised Christ from the dead. And since Christ is in you and He's already got all that, then you, you have you all just that and well. And why are we limited? Flesh. Yeah. <laughs> I so want to slap you now. Okay, God used His energy to apply life force. <laughs> it raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, now, you know, I don't think God groaned and sweated and moaned and tried to get it to work until Jesus was raised from the dead. I think it was like, poof, here it is. Yeah. Done deal. <laughs> Reached down with his glory and went pgf. There it was. <laughs> I love it. It is working in us by faith believing. And there it is. That's believing according is what? That's the faith which is the force of causation, the spiritual force of causation. It's working that. Because of the fall of man in the beginning, I feel like I just turned a corner. Well, almost kind of. Yeah. We are much more tuned to darkness and death because of the fall. Okay? That makes sense. We believe the negative first. Mm -hmm. 
And what do we believe? We believe that we are helpless. We believe we are, are without power. We believe we can't do anything. Well, where does it say that in the Word? It doesn't. Okay. And, and then we try to figure out how to fight it. It's all bad. And then we try to figure out how to fight it. And that's where religion was all born. Okay. Mostly believing we are digging out of a hole. And that's what it feels like all the time. We're just digging out of a hole. I think that's just the wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. I think it's not thinking about it. Because the life of the Spirit is so much more than that. Is the Christian walk just digging out of a hole? Mm. Sometimes it feels like it. And yeah. sometimes it feels like it because it's us actually digging out of the hole of the flesh that we dug ourselves into. Right. Okay. We need to bolster our discernment. When we see the light instead of the darkness, when we see the life instead of the death, when we see the good instead of the evil, when we see the blessing instead of the curse, you kind of, I think you know where I'm heading with this, okay? Is our problem is our discernment. What are we seeing around us? If all we're going to see is the negative, that's all we're going to focus on is the negative, and that's all we're going to walk in is the negative. But we have the total life force living in us. <laughs> the dominion of His life force living with us. Okay, explain that. That was good. I wish everybody could have seen that response. What? Oh, oh, I love you. Okay. You know, uh, she yeah, she said it was the OODA loop, and everybody goes, the how what? I got it. Yeah, because we've been talking about this is switching up, so you're actually functioning in what he is doing at the moment, huh? Got it? In advance. In advance, even. <sighs> okay, that was a nice moment between Jennifer and I, and the rest of you are going to go, What? Okay, if you want to know about the OODA loop, you have to get a hold of me, because it is really remarkable, but we have a way of doing that in the spirit realm that is really fun. So, uh, anybody who wants to know about that, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> But the things of the Spirit are there and available. But it needs to be energized to work. So we have to be aligning our frequencies to His. Always lining up, lining up, lining up. What does He say? And this is the, the thing that I, I try to get across in so many ways. And I do this in my office here in so many times. Is I ask, well, what did Jesus say? I have a husband and wife in here screaming and hollering at each other. I'm going, well, where's Jesus in this? Okay. Yeah, right, Dennis. Goes, goes right along with that conversation we had this week, huh? Yes. Because I went to ask him, well, where's Jesus in this? Right? That's the whole thing. The whole thing that they were walking in is all the negative, the junk, and the crud. Where's Jesus in it? If he only knew his real power... He'd be different, duh. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> see, see, now I've had an intimate conversation with Dennis and an intimate conversation with Jennifer. Anybody else want to go? This is not bad, huh? <laughs> okay. This is not bad for your birthday. <laughs> Piece of cake. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, you, you walked into that one. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, we need to start agreeing. Yes, that's a cake one. Agreeing with him and his path. Learning what is true about us and around us. What is the truth? We got to get our discernment working. Okay. What we have, what we have, needs to be ignited. Uh, I was just going to ask you that. What we have needs to be ignited. Yeah. Okay. You already have everything you need, and then some. Okay. A lot more than you ever knew. Okay. Alignment, discernment, agreement. Su submission. These all things have to be done. We are, that's what we're working on. Aligning ourselves, with, discerning what's happening on agreeing with what God is doing, submitting to His d dominion, not these other things. Okay? You see, this is all a work that... This, what is this? This is called cultivating our salvation. 
you have to go back to that verse? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is cultivating our salvation. We are saved. This is making it work. This is cultivating it, working it down to the fine point. Getting so it together. So why do we get that all right, of, right off the bat when we, had, when we get to born again? Because we have to mature. You got everything when you got born again. Right. Absolutely everything. Right. But you got to mature. You got to grow up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like when you're born, you you're born with your entire body, but you don't have the manual dexterity to be able to hold things properly, write out a sentence. Time. Mm -hmm. So, Kimberly sent us a video today. She caught it on her camera, Malachi's first steps. And he, he's up and, he's up and they said, come on, buddy, come on. And he just, he starts taking these steps across and Joe's just like, then he, he looks up and sees Joe and he gets all excited. He gets so excited. Oh, look what I'm doing. And he, you know, just, it was, it is a grandparent's yes. paradise right there. That's yes. just, and Aww. Nana keeps playing it. Stop it, Nana. You're driving me. I can't do anything. I'm watching. Oh, this is not okay. <laughs> anyway. First Thessalonians 2.13. Because we have to get back in the scripture here. Okay, here we go. And because of this, we give thanks to God without ceasing. That having received the word of hearing from us, you welcomed it as of God. Mm -hmm. Not as a word of men, but as it is. Truly, the word of God, which also energizes in you the ones believing. Mm -hmm. So, what you're saying <laughs> is 1 Thessalonians 2.13. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you hear the Word of God, actively receive what it is saying to you and are obedient to it, it will energize you because you are believing into it. Very good. I can be taught. Yes. <laughs> We, we were wondering for a while there, but I guess so. Okay. Drugs. It's not just a spoken word from man. What is this? This was the word of God. And this is Logos. This is the whole total thing. Okay. This is, this is the whole thing. In you and made alive in full function of energy. In you and made alive in full function of energy. This is why the word is so cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. By, by the way... It's not a book. That's right. It's not even what it's referring it's just, to. It's just not memorizing it either. No. But you have to have that revelation. No. It has to be spoken yeah. by God to you. It's got to be the rhema. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, brings us to Hebrews 4.12. Is there anything tough in Hebrews? I mean, Hebrews. I mean, come on. And it starts off and it says, For the word of God is living and energized. There it is. There's the inner gaze. The Word of God is living and energized. Okay, it's not a book, nor is it a spoken message. What is it? It's the Word of God Himself. Jesus is living and energized. Just like He said, you know, raised from the dead, this is Jesus living in me, okay? okay this, is, this is the whole <laughs> cool thing. Is it, remember the, the discussion we had a few weeks back on the anointed one mm -hmm. and anointing because I needed to do a single and I was challenged that I couldn't do it. That was that challenge <laughs> of the anointing. Well, that's just it. If the anointed one is in me and I'm letting him be energized in me, the anointing is what will come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sila. Yeah. If you set gasoline on fire, he will come out. Yes. Yes, he will. All of the power is in him. Okay. So what do we do? We let the word of God dwell in us richly. Okay. And we let him. He changes us. He grows us. He matures us. We come aligning to what He's doing and do what He tells us to do. He energizes the whole thing. Okay? So, we are inhabited by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because you can't separate them. Right. Okay? Right. We have everything in our spirit. Meaning what? Hardness of heart has never been more important to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
what keeps that in the spirit and doesn't let it through my soul? Mm -hmm. Hardness of heart. Who's in charge of our hardness of heart? Us. We are. Us. <laughs> so, who's I'm in responsible for things? <laughs> <laughs> who's in charge of not letting the Holy Spirit work in our life? Us. We must get energy from the Spirit through our souls. We've got to deal with that and, therefore, out our bodies. We've got to deal with the hardness of heart. The process is more important than ever. Mm -hmm. I was texted today by somebody who's saying the church has got to keep praying. Things are not finished with the election. Things are not finished in our... Well, yeah. Even if we were all done with the election, that mean that we've got to stop praying? Oh man, no. It's time. You know, we got to keep this thing. Why? What's happening in our world? Yeah, there's a reason right. why the scripture says to pray for your leaders, for those who are in authority. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't say just the ones you want to be in authority. No, right. you should really be praying for the ones that you don't want to be in authority because they're the ones that really need it. <laughs> I think they all really need it, but I think our country's in for a real, ra real ride. And I think that we need to, we need to, man, we need to walk in the more maturity than we ever have before. Yep. And, and man, I'll tell you, just go ahead and go outside, just walk around anywhere, it doesn't matter, in Wheat Ridge or Denver or anywhere. How much fear is there? Oh, tons. Okay. Tons. It's everywhere. everywhere. What say? I said it's overwhelming. Almost. It, yeah, it would be if I was going to let it affect me. Mm -hmm. I've got to start walking in the beaming out of no fear. Mm -hmm. i got to beam out the faith. I can affect the people walking by me on the street. Okay, guys, we have this power. We're just, we're limiting it, okay? One of the senators said uh, to uh, a guy who's... You can tell when the Christians are praying, things start happening. And he said, they pray for us to get in, and then after we get in, they stop praying, mm -hmm. and we're stuck by ourselves. Yeah. And That's very true. Right. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Need to be changed. And I'm guilty of that, too. Now. Our responsibility to bring it into submission, okay, mm -hmm. to get these things done. Choosing the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he's done everything already for us to have it. What is Jesus going to have to do more, okay? Where is he going to go to get more power for us? Kmart Blue Light Special on power? <laughs> no, Walmart Rollback. Oh, so Rollback. I, that would have made sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where's God going to go? Well, he already gave you His entire Holy Spirit. How much more power do you absolutely need? And you keep I pray praying for power. No, don't be praying for power. Pray for discernment on getting rid of the things that are causing you to hinder what's yeah. in you already. Because the hindrance is in us. We can't blame anybody. Pray for the maturity to use what you have. Big time. Of course, now we need to do a whole series on what is maturity. There is one of those in in the on in the long line there. We need discernment more than ever before. We really do. Yeah. It's time to start looking for our energy fields. Start looking and learning how these things work, okay? Mm -hmm. What influences us for life or death? What are we allowing? What are we letting in? Mm -hmm. You know, we could bring in just diet and be convicting of most things, but I'm not going to do that today because we're going to have a party and we're going to eat anything we want. Okay, so... <laughs> I've had to eat nothing but soup. Cut me some slack. Okay, there's your slack. All right. <laughs> what can we change around us? Well, a lot more than we think. A lot more than we think. Stop fearing and start faithing. Is that a new word? Works for me. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like truthing. Yeah. Okay, we're right there. <laughs> Start faithing. It really is right. Yeah. Transmitting life instead of receiving everything else. Okay, so walking through life being affected by everything is ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. No, how about walking through life going affecting it? Ka boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Right. Okay. We've got to start doing that. Okay. We are not helpless nor hopeless. What, sir? Can we back up just a minute? You asked the question, what can we change around us? It's not the things around us that we need to change. It's what's in us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and that's what's going to change the stuff around us. That's right. Okay, so that's how that works. That's exactly the way that's working. We are not helpless nor hopeless, contrary to what you think or feel. Okay, we have everything for life and godliness. That's right. Everything. He has given us everything for life and godliness through the revelation knowledge. Okay. And that's what the scripture says through the revelation knowledge. So, how do you get the revelation knowledge? You spend time in his presence and you ask him stuff. You learn and you grow and you you let him talk because it comes from him speaking because it's by Rhema. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Rhema from God. It's time to see it and believe it. See the things that are happening around us and believe it and start to use it. Blink. I'm going to make I'm going to make lightning. I am going to figure out how to do that. I missed my little lightning bolt. Okay, does this make sense? Yeah. Is this fun? We have we we are so much more than we've ever known. And I believe that the church needs this kind of message in this kind of day and time mm-hmm. because the church is being being undermined. Oh, yes. Okay. That's so, the yep, that is so the anyway, so we, have to stand we don't have to, we don't have to succumb to any of that. Amen. Okay. Just do not. Mm-hmm. So, hallelujah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, this was, so where did the energy come from? It comes from God. Where is it? What's in us? Whose energy? His. What's he need to do with it? He needs to get us mature enough for him to ignite it. Needs us to do the work we need. We need to cultivate our salvation. We need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, that's what everybody keeps talking about. You know, working out our salvation. I've heard so many messages on that, and nobody still understood how to get that. Well, where is your salvation? It's in your spirit. How do you get it out of there? Well, you get rid of the hardness of heart and start getting these things functioning. And you find out what's it truly in you and speak it and speak it and speak it and do it and walk out there and do what God is telling you to do. Makes sense. Just makes sense. All right? Questions? Yes, sir. Questions? Comments? Concerns? We're concerned for Nathaniel, but that's about a whole other thing. That's another discussion for another time. <laughs> okay. Don't eat, don't eat too much cake. Uh, I got to save room for that cake because I got a turkey to burn through, buddy. I tell you, I, that, I'm smelling that thing. The turkey's got to burn through a turkey. <laughs> yes, right. Amen. We call this turkey day for a reason. Amen. So, well, thank you all for your good wishes and very, very cool. But let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this message. We thank you for what you're showing us and doing in us and through us. And, Lord, that we can walk into to have it effective and have it coming out of us. And Lord, I just thank you for all these things that you're bringing to our understanding and the Word. We thank you for the energy that you are bringing in. And I give you praise and glory for it all in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful week of Thanksgiving. Don't forget to thank, thank him. Thank you very much. Um, that Thanksgiving. Make sure you thank Him. Grateful. You know, be grateful to the one who has done it all for us. And that's what makes it worthwhile. I've got a lot of people out there celebrating Thanksgiving and they don't even know who to thank. Mm-hmm. I do. I know Him. You know, we could spend one day playing a cranky call it Thanksgiving and spend the rest of the day thankful. Okay. God bless you all. God bless. I think so. <laughs> We're thinking that you've been cooped up for too long. <laughs> I have barely been able to talk for almost two weeks. Wow. So you saved so up. <laughs> what? You, you, saved up, I know. So. you are the unfortunate recipients of my uh, pent up insanity. <laughs> Look at all those chickens. What was going on? Okay. Can't get there. It is. God bless y'all. Oh. God bless. Yes, sir.
wisdom teeth. Oh, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's beautiful. At the bottom right, wisdom tooth removed. It was not a pleasant experience. To tell the tooth. <laughs> and it so took a lot got. to get the whole tooth out of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the whole process. I think the whole process bites. Is what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh my gosh! That was a crowning touch. <laughs> but it, it certainly didn't suck because I wasn't allowed. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's just. But you did drool. <laughs> Just shakes her head. No, they, they, they were trying to take it out in one go, but the uh, roots of the tooth were hooked in like that, so they couldn't. And then the top of the tooth broke they off. They want you to get rid of your wisdom. And then they had to cut the tooth in half, and then the back root wouldn't come out, so they had to cut away the bone. And then my jawbone cut through the gum, and then it turned into a dry socket, and then oh it got infected. No. And Oh my gosh. That's like Oh, cool. I feel for you. And drugs are bad. Don't do drugs. Yeah. He invited in to not get along. Mm. No. Yeah, I don't, I can't, I can't. Vicodin not necessarily gets along with anybody. Yeah. Some people really enjoy it. Some people love it a lot. I no. don't like it either. Yeah. About halfway through the process I was actually